Okay, welcome to the SME server presentation. This is a new product by Applied Technology Research Center, Muftasoft and Muftasoft. So this is the logo for the SME server. You've got the proxy server, file server, email on the mobile, VPN, DNS, firewall, email. So we got lots of softwares in the server. It has many features and we'll be explaining many of them. Well, first with the mail server. A mail server contains an SMTP POP and an IMAP server usually. These are the names of protocols which are used to define how applications talk to each other. SMTP is usually used for sending mail from the client softwares to the mail servers and also for mail servers among themselves to send mail and receive mail for domains. So you might have an SMTP server receiving mails for a domain, for example, atrc.net.pk. If that's your domain, your mail server might be receiving when the protocol it would be using is SMTP, which is simple mail transport protocol. Then we've got another protocol called IMAP. And similarly, the servers are called IMAP servers. These are the ones after the mail is delivered to the server, it stores it in the folders like inbox sent items and all that stuff and the client softwares need to access those folders so they use this protocol called IMAP. Uh, there is another protocol called POP which was an older version. It allows access to the inbox folder only and usually it's used to just download the emails and delete them from the inbox but it cannot access other folders. It's only like a single inbox folder downloading system. The webmail software is a software which provide, it runs on the web server and it uses IMAP to access the folders from the mail server and provide access through a browser. So if a user or customer does not have a mail client software on their computer or do not wish to have to install one and they're trying to use somebody else's computer, they can actually use a browser to access it. So they just need one software and they go to the webmail software. The webmail software will open up the IMAP folders by accessing them from the mail server and show them through the browser to the user. Then you have a firewall. A firewall is usually used to restrict network traffic. So if you have got computers inside your company which you don't want probed by computers on the outside, which is like anywhere in the world, and the, that's where the firewall comes in. So it's like having a private room where the security guards of the company do not allow anybody else except employees inside. So when the employees are inside, they can discuss things more freely about the company. Similarly, if you have a firewall, the computers inside the company can discuss and share files and printers more easily without having to worry about um, who's going to use it or not. For example, it's easier to just say, okay, we're not going to specify which people can use the printer. It can be anyone, but since there's a firewall which is preventing outside computers from accessing the printer server, so the outsiders cannot use the printer, but the inside computers are allowing everybody to use it. And by default, only the inside of computers can use the printer. Then we have a chat server. You might have heard of Yahoo Chat, Skype chat, all these text chats. So if you have your own chat server, then your people can talk to each other and uh, having a private chat server inside the company prevents friends and family from being able to access your address book in your chat or bugging you. So it is only like for company work only and it helps increase the communication between the employees. A VPN is a virtual private network, stands for virtual private network. It is a way you can connect different offices together and whatever information is sent over the internet from one office to another, all of it is encrypted by the VPN servers. This allows uh, the computers inside the company to behave as if they are in a private environment and they can talk freely. And whatever they say, even if it is not encrypted, it will be encrypted by the VPN server. So when it is transported from one office to another, the people on, the, I mean, the pe not the people, the computers, people or anything that's on the, in the way, like the post office analogy in the real world, 
will not be able to understand what the message is inside the data packets that are being sent over the internet. Now, what happens is somebody might be downloading, you know, you might have heard this before, if somebody's program is not working and he has to ask somebody else, is somebody downloading something? When you download a large file, it requests a lot of packets. And if there is no traffic management, then it can choke the your pipe and reduce the, and delay the packets coming for other softwares. The other softwares might be waiting for a few packets, but if they don't get them, they might time out. So that causes programs to fail and people don't like that. So when you have a traffic management system in place, every user or application gets a certain allocated bandwidth so one software or user cannot hog all of the internet bandwidth or the network bandwidth. And this keeps people happy and then IT administrators and the accounting people don't have to pay for very expensive, very big connections. So this is what it looks like. Without traffic shaping, you've got fluctuation amounts of traffic. With shaping, you would have like allocated bandwidths as to how, which softwares and which users can use how much. Then there's a software called the file server. This allows sharing of files. It could be any kind of file databases, photographs, sound files, presentations. And suppose you want to send it to somebody, you don't have to email it or attach it because that could uh, be a large file. It could be gigabytes. So that's where the file server is coming. You can leave it on the file server and they can have access to it. And you could make groups of people who can access different types of files. The print server is something that allows sharing of printers. And so we have put a lot of softwares into this. Uh, the softwares that we use are the ones, the same softwares that are used for and to support millions of users in large telephone type companies, you know, like telcos and ISPs. And uh, usually these softwares have a steep learning curve, but we have made it simple and the system is supported by us. So this way you can enjoy all of the reliable and secure softwares and without having to go into the details of what they're capable of. And when your company requirements grow, we can make sure that the same softwares or, I mean, similar softwares will scale up to multiple computers. I mean, you don't have to have everything on one computer as you need. If you suppose your file server is more loaded and you need to separate it, we can separate it for you. For simplicity, we've placed all of the softwares in a single server. We have a gra graphical user interface because a lot of these softwares are usually are controlled through the command line, but uh, by having a graphical user interface, those people who have been assigned the task of IT administrators and don't want to learn the command line can use these softwares. And uh, we have other configuration softwares which will translate your mouse clicks into perfect working configuration files. And that's how this thing is gets simplified. We've got even other services on the server. They include authentication server, which provides Active Directory and LDAP protocols, uh, domain name server, certificate management, which is used for SSL connections, a mail filter, which checks for viruses and spam inside the mails, antivirus, which checks the mail and files inside the file server for Windows or Macintosh viruses, DHCP server, which provides IP connections or IP addresses to computers that are connecting. Um, proxy server, this is to increase the speed of the web page pages and also secure, provide a little bit more security on the way if people are using the access the internet. Uh, then you got mail access on the mobile. The software allows people to access the mail server through their mobiles. And then there's this automatic failover so you can have more than one machine and if there's a problem with one machine it will automatically fail over and the users will not know that something has actually gone wrong but the services keep on working. Thank you for viewing this presentation. We hope you found it useful. My name is Khaver Nial. My email is khaver at dubaicomputerservices.com and my number is 971-556-398-386. So if you have any questions about the support and trainings we can offer for these offers, feel free to ask. The sponsors for this presentation are Applied Technology Research Center, Muftasoft, which is an open source support company, and Dubai Computer Services, which is an IT services company. 
Thank you. And we'll see you in the next presentation.